Thanks for staying with us. So we'll just go straight into what we found in the news. So Lami did not, did not find us a story. She's going to share from my story. But let me come to you, Jennifer. <laughs> what did you find for us in the news? Uh, COVID-19 vaccination. Nasrara begins training of 300 health workers. Hmm. So the Nasrara state government has commenced the training of over 300 health workers ahead of the arrival of the vaccine in the state. Um, the executive chairman of the primary health, he said that the training became important to expose the health workers on how to handle and carry out vaccination. Um, personally, I think this is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't know if the vaccination, like, it hasn't been mentioned yet that the vaccination is here. It, it, I know uh, we saw that auntie, news. No. I don't believe that I was news. watching it live. It's breaking okay. news. No, the vaccines have arrived in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. About 4 million, 3.9 something million vaccines have arrived in Nigeria. Yes, they handed it over to NAVDAC. And NAVDAC is going to go and test. Then they will now hand it over back to the, what's it called, the health minister. Mm. It was a ceremony. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, so that, that, that banner was not, it's no. not a joke. <laughs> okay, I, that's, exi that's exciting news. I yeah, didn't but think, I, you I know, actually didn't think it was going to But I here think this, this Nasara story. story for me, I think is a little too late. Vaccines are already here. It's now you want to you begin the training. training. Shouldn't they have trained them before now? <laughs> I think maybe they feel So this like is the arrival of the vaccines today. Oh. It came in Emirates, yes. So that's the that's the video of the the vaccine. I didn't see this. Oh news yes, ah no, you've not been it. you've not been monitoring I mean, the news. I've been very busy. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm it came in today. Busy. I think about uh, was it uh, uh, ten a.m. or eleven a.m. this morning? It landed and um, you know so they've. All right, twelve noon. Okay, they're correcting me. Lami, you were laughing. You wanted to add something to this. <laughs> <laughs> they also do Ashwabi. <laughs> Vaccine. The uh, ceremony. I just don't understand. A whole ceremony was done because of the arrival of vaccination. Anyway, it's a big story in Nigeria. Something exciting to take us from the gloom and doom we've been surrounded with. Yeah, like, like like someone, someone so said I that, think it deserves the, uh, yeah, the attention. Like was, um, I think it was Timmy who said it. That <laughs> they must have allocated funds. Of for course, the for, the, for the ceremony. Uh, in Nigeria, they will do party. They, they, you also see um, Ashwebi <laughs> on uh, vaccine arrival. You see COVID. <laughs> Red COVID-19 vaccination. So Nigeria it. cannot shock me. I've said it that anything that will shock me in this Nigeria, <laughs> I mean, it, it can't shock me anymore. All right, so my story is actually quite, um, it, ah, this is a very sad story for me. Um, so this, the headline goes, um, let, me just, let me try to pull out the headline. It's something on food um, security. Um, it says food blockage, Lagos, other, other southwest towns grown under scarcity, and soaring prices you know this is um coming off the back of the conflict that happened in um i think it was sasha and what's the name of that place you know shasha uh, shasha, shasha yes that's the name of the place um so they said that um these people the fulani headsmen had um, requested uh, a 450 million naira compensation for the loss of their cattle and the, some of their uh, people that died in the process. If not, they are going to, um, what's it called, block food from coming down south, right? And so we started seeing surfacing videos of turn, um, people turning back, vehicles loaded in uh, with food items back to the north, blocking them, I think, around... Um, uh, I, let me try to find the states now. It was Kebi or what state that they were turning them back and all of that. So now, right now, currently I hear in mile 12, there are no food items, you know, in mile 12. Everywhere is really dry. Then there are pictures, you know, um, my husband was coming back from the farm today. He now saw that people are now using smaller cars. I think I sent the pictures. He's, mm -hmm. He took the pictures and sent to me. People are using smaller cars now to transport food because these big trucks... Can, are not allowed to come, you know, they're they are turning them back. So I saw it, it, the pictures and I think I sent it. I'm not sure if I did. All right, so um, Lami, you wanted to talk about this. While you are talking, I want to pull out something that someone wrote on um, the Punch newspaper. Very, very apt summation on this food scarcity thing. But let me hear Lami's thought on it because she wanted to share in on my story. Oh, I went to the market today, like I said earlier, and I spent twice what I normally spent. You need there to have seen the, the the tomatoes and pepper that I bought. So that unbelievable. <laughs> hmm. But what I see is that um, so all through today in the car, I was listening to people talking about this very, very hot topic. And a lot of people were of the opinion that 
this is a wake up call for the, for the South. I think, yes, it is. But at the moment, do we have any immediate plans? Because it takes a kind of timeline for crops and all these things to grow. Mm. So what are we going to do in the absence of that? Okay, so are we, because I know, yes, it's an economic sabotage for the farmers, the drivers and all that. It is going to affect the businesses. But this is a major food crisis. This is a major food crisis for us in the South. So me, in as much as people are saying to wake up poor, we all should go back to the farm and all that. It's not going to happen overnight. We do so have I to. So, sorry, Lami, we don't have to go back. Lami, we do not have to go back to the farm. And this is why I was saying that there was a beautiful story. I'm trying to pull it out. Where this guy wrote about the everybody should understand that we are interdependent you understand we depend on each other and everybody should understand their strength so while the north understand that their power is in you know supplies of food and all of that mm -hmm. the south should also understand their power that they hold oil and gas that this as far as it's concerned this is the beginning of conversations around restructuring yeah. so this is a, a completely oh, oh, definitely. It's, business. An restructure. it's a business it's a business structure so you give me this i give you this in return so if we understand the role that everybody plays i don't have to be a farmer because uh, because the north are, are hoarding their food no let us negotiate it's business they need money. I need food. Do you understand? They need oil. We need, we need the money. So we, we have to now get to that point where I'm, we understand everybody's strength. I'm also very, very scared that this will not trigger other, you know, agitations. Because Nigerian Delta people now can wake up to say and say, okay, we want, um, um, uh, what's it called, resource control. Yeah. And I the agitation is fast. That, okay. But because these people are also taking part of the of whatever proceeds that comes from the um, from the oil in that region, yeah. So if they are going to hold their own produce, then they might also hold their own produce too. But I think this is the so, height of this is the height of it for for us in this country. First of all, we have but Uwa, major security really issues. You know, we have major security Uwa, issues. I don't blame them. Why? They know why they are doing this at this particular time. Because of the body language as we speak of, of the president. president. Thank you. I was going there. It's encouraging them. Yes. He's, he's not visible. Everybody to ransom. Because they know Mr. President will not take any decisive decision. And as he's so bereft of ideas and all. So they know that they will get away with this. So I don't know. It's not their fault. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so I, I think this guy, I can't remember, uh, get his name now. He said, let the North own and hone its competitive ad advantage while others do the same. Do you understand? Everybody should just understand where their strength lies and face their strength. So the North is known for food and all of those things. Everybody should gather their strength. Then we now sit down and talk restructuring. So, okay, how do we benefit and how do we, you know, support each other? I give you food, you give me this in exchange. It is it's business. <laughs> yes. I still find this very shocking. I think that's why I'm still... You're still lost for words. Yes, because... I. It's a disaster. I feel like it is heading to a destination where we actually do not want it to get to. Where? This would lead to, I see it leading to a lot of disagreements, hey, war, that is the whole idea. and all of that. That is the we, whole we, idea. So that we, we can now sit that. down and understand what, listen, Jennifer, there's something you bring on this table that I do not have, mm -hmm. right? There's something Lamy brings on this table that I do not have. I must be, I must be smart enough to recognize the individual strength of every lady on the team and respect it. Do you understand? We should, we should, we, we should learn what everybody, every region have and respect it and say, okay, you know what? I want this. What can I give you in exchange for that? That way we'll have a saner community. He was even advising that even the northern, um, the northern people should now sit down and build those ranches so that they don't have to be, um, uh, what's it called, going back and forth with... One with the about. Yes. So everybody just understand your strength and hone your skill and know your competitive advantage from the next, um, what's it called, the next region. And I think it's a, it's a fantastic um, idea. Well, uh, with this move, it means that everyone will just, they have no other choice but to wake up. Yeah, everyone because where we are now, security, that. there's problem. Now we're bringing up. food, there's shelter problem. It is because of the body Uwa, language of the president. Uh, what is it called is going to join? Phil Cassidy is also going to join. Because I'm all right. Today I was seeing, you know, probably it's artificial or not, but there were queues all over Lagos. Yeah. And it was in the news that APC was telling Nigerians that please do not panic, that there is fuel to go around. 
<laughs> but all right, <laughs> that's not our hot topic today. <laughs> but, but I think it will be worth discussing this conversation. This topic is actually is actually an interesting one. All right, so we're going to take a break. Lami wants to tell us about validity of marriage. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.